The nominees for Game of the Year 2023 have just been announced, and there is a lot to unpack here. By far, the biggest game that people had issues with is Resident Evil 4 Remake. This is because it's, well, a remake. It doesn't seem to sit well with most people that a remake of a game should win any awards, especially one as big as Game of the Year. This game is the sole cause of so many arguments. People are mad about this. A lot of people. It's also worth noting that the original version of Resident Evil 4 won Game of the Year in 2005, which has amplified this debate even more. Many people are indifferent to it though, and say that it's a completely new game. It's also important to discuss that Resident Evil 4 is a remake, not a remaster. Remakes typically follow a completely different storyline than the original game, and this is definitely true for Resident Evil. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom also receives similar criticisms to this, actually. Most people's criticism derive from the notion that The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom was too similar to Breath of the Wild. And while I kind of agree with this, I think it might be a tad unfair, most people calling it a glorified DLC or just unoriginal based on Breath of the Wild. And while I kind of agree with this, I really think it's fair to note that Breath of the Wild also did win Game of the Year when it was released in 2017, and like we saw last year, sequels just don't do super well in the runnings because of unoriginality or things like that. And I think it's unfair to give Tears of the Kingdom Game of the Year since we already saw a similar game, Breath of the Wild, win it back in 2017. The game that people are criticizing for unoriginality the most is definitely Spider-Man 2. Despite it releasing to excitement from fans and critical acclaim, the main criticism is its similarity to previous entries. Fans have argued the question of whether a highly refined sequel should be eligible for an award like Game of the Year, without introducing significant innovation. This has sparked a debate on requirements for Game of the Year and that some may just be arbitrary. The next big complaint has to do with Tears of the Kingdom, Spider-Man 2, and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And what do all these games have in common? That's exactly right, they're all console exclusives, specifically Nintendo, PlayStation, and Nintendo. A lot of people believe that games should be enjoyed by anyone, and that's true, they can. Anyone can go out and buy a Switch, a PlayStation, or an Xbox, but a lot of people think exclusives tend to hinder their enjoyment for everyone. My issue with this claim is that it proposes that just because a game's an exclusive, that means that the game has less quality or less value, which obviously isn't true. The game doesn't change, uh, and I think exclusives are fair game for Game of the Year. Speaking of Mario Bros. Wonder, many people seem to think that it's an odd pick. Not that it's a bad game by any stretch, but it's by no means mind-blowing. Game of the Year winners are celebrated for being super impressive, breaking new ground, and by definition, being the best of the best. For me, 2D Mario games are excellent, well-crafted games, but not quite Game of the Year material. And then we have Alan Wake 2 and Baldur's Gate 3. I think these games are the two biggest competitors for Game of the Year, overshadowing the others. With these games on the scene, there's a harder, harder, and harsher view on Spider-Man 2 and the other games that I previously mentioned, and big talk about should sequels win Game of the Year, should remasters win Game of the Year, and should console exclusives win Game of the Year has definitely fueled this year's Game of the Year discussion. The nominees for Game of the Year have set off many debates. What do you think should win Game of the Year? Let me know your opinion on what should win and what shouldn't.